So I have this 2D Unity project. I have a whole video series on 2D top-down gameplay, so you can check that out if you want to get to this point. But basically, we have an enemy here, and we can shoot our gun, but when our bullets hit the enemy, we don't actually know how much damage we're doing per shot. But this is useful information we want to display to our player. So in the Unity editor, the first thing we want to do is go to our hierarchy and right-click and create an empty game object. We'll rename this from game object to floating text, and we'll click on add component and type in text mesh. We'll go ahead and right click on our transform and hit reset. And within our text mesh component, we'll go to our text field and we can type in anything. So I'll type in hundred as like an example. And you'll notice by default, the text looks really jagged. It doesn't look very smooth at all. And that's because of our character size. So if we go ahead and we lower this to something small, like 0.1, and then you can set the font size as large as you want, so like 64, you'll notice it comes out much cleaner. You can also make other tweaks here, like setting it to bold or changing the font color. This is where you get to have fun with how you want to set it up. Uh, and a personal preference, I like to set the anchor and alignment to center and middle center, just because I like to work off the center instead of the top left being the origin. Okay, so we have our floating text object here but we're not instantiating it when we shoot, and it's not moving or doing anything interesting. So let's go ahead and work on the animation first. If you go up to the Window tab, you can go down to Animation and go to the Animation window, and then we can just dock this down here and drag it up. And with our floating text selected, I'll create a new animation and call this floating text.anim. And you'll notice on the floating text object, we now have this animator created for us with a new animator controller. Within this animator controller, we just go from entry to the floating text animation we created. So it basically would just play it right away, which is what we want. So with our animation window docked and our floating text object selected, what we can do is actually press this record button and then we can make changes to this object and they'll be tracked. So if we wanted this to float upwards, we could simply drag this up in the Y direction and if you hit the play button, you'll see that it actually moves up to wherever you dragged it to over the course of how many frames you have set. I'm using 60 for this animation. And so you can kind of do this with everything else as well. So I'll go back to zero. And what I want to do is I want to start the scale of the size of it as pretty small, uh, and then for it to get large, like full size, and then to fade out again. So to go from small to big to small. And so at the beginning, we could set this to something like 0 0.25, 0 0.25 in the X and Y scale. And then maybe 15 frames in, we'll set this to full size. And then at the end, we'll set it down back to like 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We'll see how that looks. So here you see it pops and then kind of fades. And I like the idea of that, but I think maybe it should pop a little faster just to see what it looks like. So what we can do to adjust this is grab this top diamond and drag it over to like 10 and then try it again. And I think that looks pretty good. One last animation I think might be cool is to rotate it in place before it starts floating up. So on the timeline here, I'll click at zero, which is the beginning of the animation. And in the Z axis of the rotation, I'll set this to something like 45. And we'll see how this looks, but I think like halfway through the animation, I want this to be set. So I'll click on 30 on the timeline, which is 30 frames. And in the Z rotation, set this back to zero. Yeah, and I think that looks pretty good. You can also change things like color or font size or any of that type of stuff. So get as creative as you can. For me, I think this is good enough. So when we play the game, you'll see that the animation's just playing over and over, and it looks pretty good. But now we need to actually spawn this when our bullets are colliding with the enemy. And we want to use the damage amount as the text field, or whatever text you want to use. We also want it to stop looping. So in my assets folder, I can click on the animation here, this floating text animation, and we'll just set loop time to uncheck. So on the enemy game object, we have this enemy controller script. And this script is very simple. It just has a public int health field and a take damage method where you pass in a damage argument and then you reduce your health by the damage. And if your health goes below zero, then the enemy dies. I also have this bullet script that I created in the 2D top-down shooting video. And basically when the bullet collides with other game objects, we're checking to see the tags on the objects. And if it's an enemy tag, we basically get the enemy controller script and we tell it to take damage with a random number between 10 and 30. You don't have to copy this exactly. You're more than welcome to. It's pretty irrelevant how I have my damage system set up or if I'm even doing damage at all. It's more how we're gonna spawn this floating text object. But in my context, it's going to be here in the take damage method. So in our enemy controller script, there's many ways you could go about handling this, but I'm gonna go with a pretty straightforward example. We need a reference to our floating text game object, which will be a prefab. So let's go ahead and do this. Instead of public, let's say in square brackets, serialize field, private, int health, and below that we'll do serialize field, 
private game object, and we'll call this floating text prefab. Serialize field private and public both result in the same thing of in the inspector. It shows your variables in the component and allows you to interface with them. But as a coding rule of thumb, you shouldn't have your member variables be public. And if you need them to be, that's when you should make an accessor or a getter and setter. So we can put in a value for our health here, 100 is fine. So we need to make our floating text object a prefab, but we actually don't want to just drag it into the assets folder, which is how you make a prefab. First, we wanna create a new empty object and rename it to floating text parent. And we can reset the transform. And then we wanna drag the floating text object onto it and make it a child of the parent. And then make sure the floating text child object, which has the text mesh and everything, has its transform reset as well. And this is important. And why we're doing it is because in our animation for the floating text, we have it constantly floating upwards, right? So we're moving its position and its rotation and other things like that. So this can actually interfere with us as we're trying to instantiate this thing in a certain location. Is click and drag on our floating text parent object and drag that into the assets menu. We can then delete this object in the hierarchy. And on our enemy, in the enemy controller script, let's drag the new floating text parent prefab into this variable spot. So now we can create a new method for actually handling instantiating this floating text prefab. So I'll just make a new method called void show damage, and it'll take in a string of text. And in here we wanted to make sure that we actually have our prefab set. So we can say if floating text prefab, this means if we actually have a value assigned to this variable, we can say game object prefab is equal to instantiate floating text prefab at our transform dot position. And for rotation, we'll say quaternion dot identity. And so we're storing the instantiated prefab. So remember, our prefab is the parent object, but we want to get the text mesh component on the child. So what we can say is prefab dot get component in children of type text mesh, and then set the text equal to text. And so now we simply just need to make a call to this show damage method. So in take damage, we can say show damage, and then we can pass in the damage integer, but first we have to convert that to a string. And so basically what the flow is, is our bullet will generate a random integer between 10 and 30. So let's pretend it was 20. 20 would come into the take damage method. We would then convert that to a string, so it's text and pass that into the show damage method. And then the show damage method will basically, will look for the text mesh component on the floating text object, and then update the displaying text to 20, which means now when we play the game, we should expect to shoot our game object and see the text spawn. But we have one last issue we need to solve. You'll notice that the text is not going away after it finishes its animation. And so I'll right click on our assets folder and create another c -sharp script. And I'm gonna call this script destroy in seconds. And I'm gonna take this script and drag it onto our floating text parent prefab and open it up. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna be destroying this game object, but you could certainly use something like object pooling, which I have another video on, to be more efficient and just disable it and then reuse it. And so we only need our start method and we only need one variable. I'll say serialize field private float seconds to destroy. And I'll default that to 1f. And so basically in start, we just wanna say destroy game object, which is this game object, and then we'll pass in seconds to destroy as the second argument. So now we should expect these objects to destroy themselves after one second. And again, you could use object pooling and disable it as a more efficient way of doing it. But that looks pretty good. This is exactly what we're looking for. That about wraps up our tutorial. If this video helped you out, then please, please, please give it a like. If you have any questions, join our Discord. We have tons of people that are willing to help you out, including myself. And for more game development content, make sure you subscribe.